Hello, I'm Jaden from XLR Security, and today I'm going to be testing the Ray-E Wi-Fi 6 Indoor Access Point. This is a very powerful device. It supports networking speeds up to around 3000 megabits per second, and it also has a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. This device also has a cloud management portal, meaning that you can configure it easily from the Ray-E app on your phone, and you can also monitor the statistics in real time remotely. So I'm going to be first installing this um, in our office. Then I'm going to show you how to do the initial setup on the app. And then we're also going to compare it against the Ubiquiti access point using the network mapping app on my phone. And we're going to see how the actual range of this device is, see how far the Wi-Fi can travel. And then finally, we're going to go into the Ray-E app and we're going to see all the advanced settings and monitoring that this device is capable of. So join me as I install this one and we're going to see how it performs. It comes with screws and drywall anchors or mounting anchors, so that's helpful. Okay, so I'm going to scan using the Ray-E app. And I'm gonna scan this QR code and that allows me to add my device. So we go XLR security office. Everything else looks good. Click add. Project name, XLR security. Okay, so I finished adding the device to my Ray-E app. Now I'm gonna put this back up on the ceiling. Just make sure that the cable is hidden and everything's nice and organized. All right, that's good there. So I've got the NetSpot app downloaded on my phone. And I'm using the pro version, which costs, I think it was eight or nine dollars in order to use the network mapping feature. And I've also loaded up a photo of our office into the app. So all I'm going to do is press on start scanning. And that's going to give us a signal at that location. And then we need to move around the office. And for each and every square, we need to collect the signal strength data. So I'm going to walk over here a bit further and we're going to scan from this location and we're basically just going to move around the office and the warehouse and the parking lot and collect as much data as we can and I've already collected this data yesterday for our ubiquity access point so at the end we're going to compare the ubiquity u6 Lite compared to the ray e access point and see which one gives us better coverage All right, so we just finished capturing a bunch of data on the NetSpot app on our phone. Now let's go back inside and see how this Ray-E compares to the Ubiquiti. All right, so I finished the network map after installing the Ray-E access point. So here are the results. On my left side, this is the Ubiquiti's network map. And on my right side, this is the Ray-E network map. As you can see, they are both quite similar in terms of coverage. The Ray-E does have slightly better signal in towards the back of our warehouse, which makes it a great option for both home and office usage. So after scanning the QR code, the device should show up in your Ray-E app. And if you're not able to scan the QR code for whatever reason, like let's say you've installed it and you're not able to get the ladder back to that location, you can also add your device from the serial number. So we just go down to the bottom where we have our workspace and you go to add device. And instead of scan to add, we choose manually enter at the bottom, choose your device type 
enter the name and then just start typing in the serial number. You can also add it in this way. Pretty convenient. So now that our device has been added, let's see what kind of settings we can adjust. So again, we go to the bottom where our workspace is and we have all these settings like Wi-Fi setting, reboot, upgrade, etc. So I think the most important setting you want to check is the upgrade first. So you can easily do your upgrade your device to the latest version. Right now, mine is already on the latest version, so everything's fine. But if there was a new version available, it's very easy to update it through the Ray-E app. Okay, um, so if you want to configure the basic settings of your access point, that will be done when you first add the device. But if you want to change your SSID or the password, you need to click on your device in the uh, map area. And this will bring up all the settings of the access point. As you can see, I have the IP address, a local IP address, firmware version. It tells you how many devices are connected. We can also change the SSID by clicking on the SSID here. And you can see the Wi-Fi password and you can change the password and the SSID. You can enable or disable the 2.4 or the 5 gigahertz uh, radio frequency. You can also go under to advanced settings. You can adjust a lot of things here, as you can see. I'm um, not going to go into every single setting, but there's a lot of options here. Uh, we can also change the encryption. If you want to use uh, like a stronger encryption, you can enable WPA3 or WPA2. Uh, I have it set to WPA2, which is quite standard. Uh, we also have the option to monitor our network traffic. So if you click on monitor up here, you can see how much um, traffic is being used. So you, you can adjust by the last 24 hours or the last seven days. Uh, in this case, we just have data from the last sort of one hour when we've been testing this device. And you can see um, how much uh, usage it's getting. You can also open the web interface by clicking eWeb. And this creates a tunnel that allows you to access the web interface. Okay, that's pretty cool. So we can open a VPN tunnel to get into the web interface of the device if you want to manage it from this layout. Uh, maybe if you find it easier to manage the settings, you can see all the same icons here. So pretty convenient. So that covers the basic settings of the Ray-E app. Uh, pretty simple for your first time. You just have to set the SSID and the password of your device and everything else is taken care of for you. Uh, but what are some of the more advanced settings that are available? So let's check them out right now. If we go under advanced, we have something called wireless optimization. So let's see if we can do a network scan and if this will tell us which frequency it's uh, more optimal. So we're going to do, actually, let's do a deep optimization. This will upgrade all access points to the latest version and it will also scan their network for the optimal Wi-Fi channel. So let's click on uh, advanced settings, see what we have. Okay, I'm going to leave everything on default here and I'm going to choose optimize now. So as you can see, it's scanning now. It's going to take about five minutes. So I'll fast forward when it's done and we'll see the results together. Wi-Fi optimization has been completed. It only took us about a minute, which is quite nice. And as you can see at the bottom, it says that our channel bandwidth has been changed from 160 to 80 and the channel has been changed from 56 to 36. So that's optimized. We can click on that for more information uh, to see what else has been changed. It looks like uh, not much. Um, and if you go to the 2.4 gigahertz frequency, it says no change. So that's already optimized. Um, right, so that's all good. And then at the bottom, we can just click. Nope, we don't want to restore. We'll just go back. So perfect. So our optimization was complete. This is great if you are in an area where there's a lot of Wi-Fi networks because the other networks may be conflicting with your Wi-Fi access point. So that will make sure that 
you reduce the interference and you get the best signal possible. There are also some options here such as um, roaming optimization, AP load balancing and AP mesh. This is if you have multiple of these access points, you can allow your device to connect to the one with the strongest signal without actually disconnecting and reconnecting. It'll just automatically choose the one with the best signal. Uh, we don't have multiple of these to be testing right now, but that feature should be very helpful and it would be great to use in a sort of like college, hotel, supermarket. Uh, very nice if you have a big space and you want to cover with excellent signal strength. We also have option for radio settings. So from this radio settings menu, we can adjust uh, the bandwidth. Uh, so actually this has already been optimized by the Wi-Fi optimization, so we don't need to adjust this. But if you did want to change the bandwidth of your frequency, you can do it in this menu. Under advanced settings, we also have an option for the captive portal. So what this does is it allows you to set up a web page for your customer. So when they're accessing the Wi-Fi for the first time, they're going to see a login page and they might have to enter some information or maybe they have to use a voucher or a coupon to pay for the Wi-Fi. So this is commonly set up by hotels and restaurants for people who want to use their Wi-Fi. Portal Capture was a little bit more in depth than I was expecting. You have to set it up using a laptop and sign into the Ray-E Cloud Portal. But I managed to get it working. So you can see uh, on my phone, I'm in my network settings. I have an SSID called Portal Capture. So if I log in to this network, this will bring me to the Portal Capture page. And in order to connect to the Wi-Fi, I need to enter my email address, phone number, and my first name. And this portal interface is completely customizable. So everything here, I've already wrote it down. So this is very handy if you have a customer who has something like a, a hotel or a restaurant and they want to offer Wi-Fi, but they also want to collect some information from their customers so that they can message them with promotions in the future. So it's good to know that Ray-E supports this portal capture feature. Overall, it's a pretty simple product to use and set up. It's especially nice that they give you the option to manage everything from the app, and they also give you option for one-click cloud upgrade, so you always have the latest firmware on the device. Um, and if you do want to go in-depth in this device, they give you lots of options that you can explore, and the Ray-E access point will also integrate with Ray-E's entire ecosystem, including their routers as well as their managed switches. If you want to purchase one of these access points for your own use, you can click the link in the description below to visit our website, as we are an authorized distributor for Ray-E products. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, feel free to like and subscribe for more content like this in the future. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.